Hey boys and girls, welcome to Sparks. Hey, it's Mr. Gary here, and I am so glad that you are joining me this week for another exciting episode of Sparks. Last week, we left off with another cliffhanger with Mr. Craig and Creation. And so this week, Mr. Ethan's with, with us, and he is going to finish up our Creation lesson. And so you don't want to miss this. Now, boys and girls, hopefully you have your Bibles with you and your handbooks. If you don't have those, go ahead and hit the pause button, run and grab those, and come back and hit the play button, and you'll be all set for the lesson today, okay? We are going to be in the book of Genesis, the book of Genesis chapter 1, all right? Book of Genesis, the very first book in the Bible, chapter 1, okay? That's where we're going to be today. All right, well, it's time for our opening, so I need everybody on your feet because we are going to do the Pledge of Allegiance, okay? So everybody on your feet, hands over your hearts. That's right, your right hand, very good. Right hand over your heart. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Very good. All right. Now, keep standing. Pledge to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Good job, everybody. All right. It's time for our theme song. So just keep on your feet. Here we go. Good job, everybody. All right. Well, it's time for our Books of the Bible song. And I'll tell you what, you all are doing so well at this. So let's just quick review. So how many total books in the Bible? That's right, 66. And the Bible's made up into two parts. They are called the, that's right, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Very good. And so in the Old Testament, there are 39 books. And in the New Testament, there are 27 books. And I'm going to add one more this week. And so in between the Old Testament writing and the New Testament writing, there was a period of silence there in between those two. And that period of silence was 400 years. 400 years between the time that they finished writing the Old Testament until they started writing the New Testament. There was 400 years of silence. Yep, that's right. All right, so let's do it. Let's do the books of the Bible song. I want to hear you singing. Let's do it. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua. Judges, Ruth, first and second Samuel, first and second Kings, first and second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms and Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Zachariah, Matt. 
Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, First and Second Peter, First John, Second John, Third John, Jude. And Well, boys and girls, it is time for our lesson with Mr. Ethan. And so, Mr. Ethan, take it away. Welcome, Sparkies. Are you ready for another fun day of Awana? This is Mr. Ethan. And what I thought we would do, we're going to learn about the last three days of creation. But first, before we do that, we need to back up just a little bit and go back and let's talk about what Mr. Craig already went over, we're gonna review just a little bit. So, everyone get your fingers out. Remember, we need to put our fingers up. So on the first day, God created dark and light to make day and night. That was the first day. Now, on the second day, God created the atmosphere and the air that we breathe and everything in the air God created on the second day. And then on the third day, God created the land. Remember, we stomp our feet and the ocean and we move our hand. And then he created the plants that you see there. And we take our hand and we stick it up and we make a pretty flower. So on the third day, he made land and ocean and separated that. So we have places to walk, and then we have oceans and lakes that we can swim in. That was all on the third day. And then on the fourth day, God created different parts of the day. He created the sun, and we put our hand up for that. And he created the moon, which makes it dark at night. Everyone likes it when it gets dark about this time of year, and maybe we go out and have a fire pit and make s'mores. Everybody loves s'mores. And then he also created the stars at night, so we can look up when we're outside at night and look at all the stars that he created. And we try and count them, and there are just so many. It's, it's, there's no way to even count all of those. So that's a little review on the first four days. Now tonight, we're gonna to dig in to the fifth day, the sixth day, and the seventh day. So before we do that, I wanna read from Genesis 1.20 and go into a little bit of chapter two. So we're gonna learn about, from the Bible, days five, six, and seven. So, and God said, let the water teem with living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the vault of the sky. So God created the great creatures of the sea and every living thing with which the water teems and that moves about in it according to their kinds and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number and fill the water and the seas and let the birds increase on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the land produce living creatures according to their kinds, the livestock, the creatures that move along the ground, and the wild animals, each according to its kind. And so it was. God made the wild animals according to their kinds, the livestock, and all the creatures that move along the ground according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds of the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and all over the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created 
God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They, they will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give you every green plant for food. And it was so. Then we're going to move real quick to chapter 2 just for a couple verses. So by the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because He on it he rested from all the work of creating that had been done. So we're going to unpack that just a little bit and go back and we're going to talk about day five. So on day five, God created the fish. We can make a fish symbol by just taking one hand and moving back and forth to pretend that we're swimming like fish. And then God created the birds. For the birds, we would flap our arms. Everyone knows how to flap their arms. I want to see everyone flapping their arms. Come on now. Come on now. I don't see everyone doing it. Okay, okay, now I see everyone doing it. Good job, everyone. So that was the birds. And then remember for the fish, this is how the fish go, right? There's big fish, there's little fish. I really like fish. We have fish in our aquariums and we've been doing a lot of fishing this summer and we've caught quite a few fish. So that was on day five. God created the fish and the birds. Now, on day six, God created the animals that roam the earth. All of the animals, all the, what, how many animals can you name? There's, yep, I think I heard it. Did I hear rabbits and dogs and cats and deer and cows? There are all kinds of animals that God created. And then I think it even gets even better. God created humans. And does everyone know who was the first human that was created? Do I see any hands out there? Do I see any hands? <gasps> yeah, you're right. God created Adam. And then Adam was walking around the earth. He was created from the dust. That's how God created Adam. Then God wanted Adam to have a friend because Adam was all by himself. So then from Adam, God created Eve. And there was Adam and Eve, the first two humans on earth. So that was day six. Pretty cool, wasn't it? Now, I don't know about you, but I would be really tired if I had to do all that. I had to put a little concrete out tonight and I'm already tired from that. Well, God built the entire world in six days and put everything on the planet in six days. So on the seventh day, God rested. And he also made the seventh day holy. So that's why for a lot of us, maybe not all of us, but a lot of us, we go to church on Sunday. Some of us go to church on different days. Some might go on Wednesday or on Saturday, but there's a day that we should always make our Sabbath, and that's the day to rest and to worship God. So one little funny thing I have is God knows us so well because he made us in his image. He knows everything about us. He knows how many hairs you have on your head. He knows how many different color hairs some people have on their head. See this guy? That's Mr. Rick. For those of you in second grade, you might get to see him in T&T next year. 
he's pretty funny. So, remember, God made you the way he wanted you. He made everyone the way he wanted everyone made. So there might even be someone that you may not always get along with. It might be someone at school. It might be a sister, a brother. It might be someone in your class. But remember, God made them too the way he wanted them. So that's what we have to remember. But for creation, God built the entire creation in six days and then he rested on the seventh day. So what I also wanted to go over, just to give everyone a little heads up, are the verses and the pages that each group is going to go over. And first, for hand gliders, you're on page 10 and you're on R is raised, 1 Corinthians 15.4. And Sky, Stor Str Sky Stormer, sorry, you're on pages 16 and 18, and you get to work on your crossword puzzle and the Old and New Testaments. That's a pretty big one. And I skipped first grade, I'm sorry. First grade, the Wing Runners, you're on page 10, a good time to pray, John 20, 31, and Psalms 118, verse 1. So those are the pages to work on in your Awana books. I hope everyone's doing well. If you need any assistance, be sure and give us a call or your, your leader in Sparks. We'd be more than happy to help you. And before I go, I want to make sure we pray. So if everyone can put down your Bibles, put down your Awana books for a moment and fold your hands and we're going to say a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day that we've been able to come together and learn as our Sparks group. I just pray that everyone takes a moment to think about the creation that you have blessed us with and given to us and that we don't take anything for granted and that we're appreciative for everything that we have and how we are made in the likeness of you and you made us the way you want us. And we just pray that we we serve you the way you want us to do and that we have a great rest of the day as we work on our verses and our books of the Bible and all these things we ask in your name. Amen. Well, Sparks, that was fun. I hope you had a great time and I will see you later. Bye-bye. Wow, Mr. Ethan, what a great lesson. Yes, God created everything, the whole world and everything in it. That's right. And we are each one unique. That's right. Psalm 139 says that God knitted us in our mother's womb, that we are wonderfully, fearfully and wonderfully made. That's right. That's what it tells us there. He knows everything about us. He knows every word before it leaves our tongue. He knows everything. The number of hairs on our head. Yeah. How cool is that? Yeah. So, boys and girls, I hope that you understand how special you are to God. So special that he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for your sins so that you might have eternal life. Right? That's what John 3.16. That's what we learned in our flight 3.16, right? Yeah. So don't ever forget that. He loves you that much that he would send his own son. He did send his own son to die on the cross for yours and my sins. All right, boys and girls. Well, get your sections done. Say your verses. And then come right back here next week and join us for another exciting episode of Sparks. But until then, remember that Jesus loves you and so do we. And we'll see you right back here. Bye.